Hello. Is my voice coming through okay? Does it sound right? Hello everyone, how are you guys? <laughs> nice to see some new faces starting off chat. This is a different time than the last one that I did, so hopefully we can catch some people who couldn't make the last one. Let's wait for a few more moments as people come in today. <laughs> Glad you could be here, Richie. Um, so today I figured we would just go ahead and have a really chill live stream. It's a really busy week for me, but I wanted to stop in here to say thank you guys for 20,000 subscribers. And uh, you guys said in the community tab that you'd like to do some color mixing. Hey Barb, hey Laura, hey Megan, Scarlett, Peter. <laughs> um, so I pulled some new colors that I have um, that I recently purchased and thought that we could go ahead and play with some color mixes for them so that I can get to know these colors better because these are all new to me. So hi guys, I'm glad I could catch it all the way in Australia. So you guys are going to tell me what you want me to mix first. The colors that I have here are Purpurite, Perylene Maroon, Burgundy Red Ochre, Mummy Voxite, Caput Mortem Violet, and Phthalo Green uh, Yellow Shade. But before you guys have to choose, I'm going to go ahead and paint out the main swatches for you guys so that you can see those colors a little bit better in case you've never seen them before. How's that sound? Does that sound okay? What are you guys thinking? Alright, let's start off with our lighter colors first. Oh, this, by the way, this is some color swatching that I did with uh, Potter's Pink, which I recently got. Hey, Dindel. <laughs> All right. So this um, was kind of similar to what we're going to be doing today. I was playing around with Potter's Pink, seeing all the different mixes in here. There's some really beautiful ones with different granulation. I know. Isn't it cool, Elizabeth? Um, so hopefully we'll find some other fun stuff in here today. So let's see. I've got little pans here off to the side. Going to go ahead and paint our big swatches in. And then you guys can choose which one you want to see. But mostly I just wanted to stop in and say hi to everyone. Thank you for all of your amazing support recently. Thank you guys for being here. This first one is the Mummy Bauxite. Richie Ray asks, he's new to watercolor and what is granulation used for? So, um, oh, by the way, guys, I don't believe the chat will be saved for the replay. And that was after our last one that we did. I don't think it's an option for when I stream from my phone and I still haven't figured out how to get a stream system working from a Chromebook versus a regular laptop, so I think we're stuck with this for now. Um, but I'll try and read out the questions that I'm going to be talking about. Um, so granulation can be used for a lot of textural effects, and when I first started painting with watercolor, I didn't have any appreciation for it whatsoever. I didn't like it. I thought it was weird. I didn't like the textures it produced. Um, I wasn't a fan of it, and the more and more that I've gotten to appreciate watercolors for the medium that they are, um, I've really come to love textural granulation. I'm trying to use it more and more, and you'll actually see more of that on Thursday's video for the AAC. Um, so the reason I think it's so jarring and beautiful, and both at the same time, is that you don't really find this in other mediums. Um, it's not a thing in like acrylic paint or oil paint because those are opaque thick mediums and you don't have the separation of the pigments from your binder and your water. So it'll be really interesting. Fun. We have some people color mixing themselves. Should be a perfect stream for you then. This is Burgundy Red Ochre. This was kind of an impulse buy. My local art store was going out of business, unfortunately, um, and this weekend was their last weekend open. And they had Daniel Smith colors on sale, and they were about 50% off of retail. Not 50% off the price you see online, but it was like a, another 20% on top of that, probably. 
and um, they had a lot of earth tones left over and so I was picking out some new ones and this one looked really pretty so it's kind of like a burnt sienna color it's made from PR 102 hi Otto I'm glad you could be here but don't stay up too late if you're tired I know it's late there I saw that your video just got uploaded and I'm really excited to watch that after the stream if you guys don't already know who Otto is she has a wonderful channel and she's doing a head-to-head -head challenge with some Daniel Smith colors over on her channel so she's got videos um, that that compare two colors side by side so we can see that <laughs> okay good I'm glad you're comfy in bed at least I did that last night I wasn't feeling well I got in bed at 8 p.m. and uh, then stayed there for another two hours watching things until I fell asleep but I needed the rest for sure <laughs> Um, oh, another another thing about chat, if you can go ahead and format your questions, I don't think we have any of the mods in right now, so hopefully everyone behaves themselves and is, is doing well. Um, Otto, you don't have to stay up late, but I can make you a mod if you would like to be. Hey, Lillian. Let me go ahead. Yeah, no pressure, Otto. You can go to bed whenever you want, but I'll put you as a mod just, just for the time being. <laughs> hey, Kelly. Um... So basically in chat, if you can go ahead and put your question with a word question in all caps and then followed by your question not in caps, that will help out a lot and I'd really appreciate that. Hey Kelly, Cajun Sunshine Crafts, so welcome. Um, so the question we have here is do I make my own swatch cards? If so, how? And I have a video on that if you want to go ahead and find that video on how my, I make my swatch cards. I do most of my swatch cards on Arches watercolor paper because um, I like that's the paint that is the paper I use most often and that is what I think it's most helpful. Whatever paper you use most often is what you should use for your swatch cards so you know what your watercolors will look like on them. But I have a video dedicated to that. Hi, Catherine. Yes, thank you. I'm feeling a bit better. <laughs> Definitely better than last week. And last night I had a weird scare. I started to get like chills and I was super, super uncomfortable and my whole body hurt and they were very flu-like symptoms or cold-like symptoms. So I went to bed early and got some rest. So I'm hopeful, hoping that that uh, knocks it away for, for the time being. This next one is Kaput, Mort Kaput Mortem Violet um, PR 101. For those of you who have joined the chat since I very first started, um, we are going to be color mixing today with some new colors that I'm not very familiar with. And what I'm doing now is putting the swatches of all the colors out so you guys can tell me which ones you want to see me mix with first. You'll get to decide what we're mixing today out of these choices. Auto, if you want, I can take a quick detour and show you my sap green uh, mix with the anthraquinone blue and the nickel azo yellow. Lillian asks, so I'm planning to get all the Daniel Smith watercolors. No, I don't need all of them. I mean, it's fun to play, but it can be really overwhelming when you get that many colors going on. This is a Winsor Newton color. This isn't Daniel Smith, this one here. Let's see, we have another question here for noobs. Should we swatch and do values on artist grade paper, student grade paper will do? Heard from many professionals. Yeah, so if you are serious about your hobby and wanting to get further into watercolor, I would recommend to any beginner, if you're gonna spend money anywhere, spend it on your paper because that is gonna make the biggest difference. You can use crappy paints on good paper and they'll look better, you know? <laughs> Um, paper is so, so, so important. So I would recommend using a cotton paper if possible, um, if you can afford it. And B Paper makes a really great one that's available on Amazon for a very reasonable price. Um, so you can go ahead and check that one out if you want. But if you are painting on your student grade watercolor paper and you're not going to get cotton paper, do your swatches on that because it will reflect what colors you're going to see on your actual paintings. 
you'll see in that video that I did for the swatch cards, uh, how to make your swatch cards, what a difference student grade versus art, uh, artist grade or cotton paper paper can do for you. So check out that video if you guys are interested. Hey, I'm glad you could make it. How's, how's AAC going? Are you taking a break? Are you done? I finished mine up earlier this afternoon, so I'm excited for that. Let me catch up on chat real quick. Uh, question, if you own five to eight paints of the same color, but from different brands, how do you end up using the tubes from the paints that you're not so fond of? Um, I would use whatever you're going to use in your main palette. You can use the other versions um, as you kind of get to them if you want to, to replace them. If you really don't like a version, you can, you know, donate it to uh, either an organization or like a local artist group, or you can give them to friends. Use, use what you like and pay forward to others what you don't want to use, is what I would say. Hey Ian, welcome. I think I've missed a bit of chat here, I'm sorry. What has you stumped about the 24 set of Magello? I might have missed it or I will get to it. I'm trying to get through everything here. Granulation uh, medium, we had a question, that they called it granulation fluid. Um, there's a granulation medium that you can add to your paints to make them granulate, even if they're not granulating colors. I have an older video on watercolor granulation and I use the medium in that video. So you can go ahead and check that out and it'll show you what it does. I have not tried Soho watercolors. All right, so let me move some stuff out of the way and get these swatches here for you guys to see. Eve says she's taking a little break from AAC and letting it dry. Thanks for stopping by. All right, so let's see if we can get our colors out here in any kind of order that makes sense. All right, these are the new colors I'd like to play with today. I think you can see them all. Which would you like to see? Otto says the purpurite looks gorgeous. I agree. I'm really excited to play with that one. I don't know how useful it will be for mixing, but I'm really excited to try it out. The purpurite is not sparkly. I don't think it's not like the amethyst. It's a little bit different, but it's a really pretty purple. Perlene Maroon. Perlene Maroon was in my top five favorites video and I think I explained in that video that I included it because it was so many other people's favorites and that I didn't have strong feelings on it. I actually don't know this color very well and I would love to mix that today if you guys want to see. We have another vote for Kaput Morton Violet. I have not tried Wildborn Artisan colors. I've never heard of them actually. All right, I think I see the most for purple right, so let's start with that one, and then we can try some other ones. Uh, Gectonia asks, what is AAC? Um, AAC is the Animal Artist Collective. It's a group of artists that Jennifer, Charlie, and I founded for YouTube that, uh, whoa, sorry, that was really loud. I'm so sorry. I dropped my brush on my plate. Um, and every... Two months we come out with videos about uh, a specific habitat this year anyway is the themes is that there's different habitats and um, we pick animals within them talk about the animals talk about animal conservation and um, it's a really really great cause um, for those of you guys who don't know who might be newer to the channel I used to be a zoo educator so that's where my passion is and um, Jennifer and I really wanted to start a group of artists on YouTube to really capitalize on that so 
We donate the profits from those pieces to charity and just try and spread the word about uh, how you guys can help out with different species around the world. All right, we're starting with purple right. I'll ask again uh, afterwards, but it looks like Caput Mortem and Perline Maroon have some next dibs on colors. Oh, I'm glad that the cell phone didn't pick that up then. My mic on the cell phone must be better than a, well, not better, but like better at um, stabilizing noises than um, my other camera is. It was really loud in person. <laughs> So this is Titanium Gold Ochre from Schminka. It's a slightly opaque color, but it typically will make really pretty dusky colors with purples. So I wanted to see how that reacted. Go ahead and feel free to suggest colors in the chat and I will go ahead and pull from chat if I can see it in time uh, to mix with the colors that we're mixing with. Hi Grace, I'm glad you could make it. We have a question asking, what's my favorite thing to paint? Any animal. I don't think I could choose a specific, um, although rhinos are really fun to paint. I always kind of go back to that. That was the first animal I ever painted in watercolor, like a complete, complete painting. And um, uh, they have really fun textures for watercolor. I just think they, they work out really well. Um, let's see. Marikai, I don't think I understand your question about talking about raw. Maybe there was a oh, raw umbers. Don't raw understand. Um, raw umber, there's going to be a color spotlight on. So I will wait for the color spotlight for that. I'm going to use, um, oh, you know what? I wasn't planning on going all the way down to the bottom so that I could write the names here. Oh, well. I'll have to remember. You guys can help me remember. This is Titanium Gold Ochre. This next one's going to be Hansa Yellow Deep. <laughs> Grace, yeah, I'm going to make you wait a little bit. Partially because I don't use raw umber very often, and so I honestly don't have that much information for you on it yet. I did add it to my palette a couple, um, probably more than a couple, like uh, six months ago or so for a cool... Uh, brown and I do use it um, in animal portraits it comes up a lot where you need a cooler undertone but I just like warmer colors better so I don't use it as often it's really pretty when you mix it with PV19 to make a raw umber violet Jolie thanks I'm glad you like the color spotlights and that they're helpful Richie Ray asks what's my favorite earth tone color. That's like, I don't know if you realize how hard of a question that is for me. I love earth tones. I love everything about earth tones. I love every earth tone. <laughs> um, I don't know if I can pick one. I'm really, really loving working with some of the Daniel Smith um, Primatech colors lately and they have a beautiful range of earth tones so I'm finding new favorites I feel like every day that just come come up I would say my most used earth tone though is definitely burnt sienna I use that more than anything else oh is Jacqueline here yay hi Jacqueline sorry I missed you come in And this is Carmine. It's kind of close to PV19. It's a cool, warm, or cool, cool, warm. That doesn't make any sense. It's a cool, rich red. I love warm purples. It's my favorite. I think they're beautiful. And so anytime I can mix a warm purple, I will do that. question about how do I feel about layering paints? 
I think it's expected that you're supposed to layer in watercolor. Like, I don't know why anyone would give you a hard time for layering. Um, trying to think. I don't think there's, I mean, as long as your paper can handle it. I layer all the time. I do tons of layers, and it's a great way in watercolor to be able to adjust your values and your tones. I, I love it. Jacqueline, I hope this time works for you. I know that you couldn't make earlier in the day, so I did my AAC earlier and um, saved the stream for later today just to try and get some new faces in here. This is anthraquinone blue. Oh, Grace, yes, you can mix it with pretty much any PB19. She's asking about raw umber mixing with PB19. Um, yeah, you can mix it with pretty much any any one. If you mix it with one that's slightly more violet, you'll get a richer tone, but all of them are pretty nice. Yeah, I mean, if, if the layering works for you, do it. If that works. Um, sometimes papers can't handle it and they start to get a little bit muddy and um, they're not as as bright or as vibrant. So I would just balance that. And if you find that your paper can't handle it, just move up to a paper that can. So I have a bunch of Stonehenge samples somewhere down here that I have not tried yet, but they're here. So I will get to them, I promise. <laughs> yes, uh, Grace M. Graham's PB60, as always, the only one the only one worth having on your pot. No, I'm just kidding. There's other brands that are good too, but M. Grams is by far, 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 far my favorite. I'm using my studio palette for mixing today. I know you can't see it, but it's off to this side and it, it's just all my normal colors over here. No worries, Jacqueline. I know it's dinner time for a lot of people. Hey, Lisa. And we have a question about how to tell if it's a warm purple. So warm purple is one that's going to lean towards red. Let me get some scrap paper out. I can show you the difference. Ah, too much scrap paper. So a warm purple is going to have more red. This is Rose of Ultramarine by Daniel Smith. And dioxazine violet has more blue in it. Hi, Cricket. And that is a cool purple. So the warm purple leans red, cool purple leans blue. Uh, Purpurite is a Daniel Smith color. It's a Primatech color. I don't think it's on their main swatch card, or is it? I didn't know about it for a long time, and then I found it. I think if someone sent me a sample. I'm trying to remember. A lot, of, a lot of paint samples flying around here. I think someone sent it to me, and then I was able to give it a try. It's really pretty, though. I know there's a lot of questions coming up in chat and they're great questions, but they're also really complicated questions. So if you have a question that you feel like you need some more guidance on, go ahead and find me either on Instagram or send me an email and you can ask those questions um, and I can either link you to a video or I can give you a more thorough answer than I can. I just can't keep up with chat and painting at the same time and once again if you can please put your questions with the format of the word question in all caps and then the question itself in regular text that'll help me find them a little bit easier
We have 98 people in the room right now. Thank you guys so much. I'm glad we have a bunch of new faces here that I get to chat with. It's different than the morning crew. <laughs> um, if you can go ahead and give the video a thumbs up, that would really help out the channel if you guys feel like that. Uh, is it Kirstein? I don't know if I've seen that name before. She asks, um, what are some must-have colors in Imgram? My first one is always going to be their Anthroquinone Blue, which is PB60. I think it's the most unique to their line in terms of the vibrancy compared to other brands. I also like their Cobalt Teal, which I just did a color spotlight on. Lillian agrees with the cobalt teal. <laughs> this one here, this is the purple right. This is the color that we're working with. This is, did I say this is thalo turquoise? I'm sorry, I just kept painting. Um, this is thalo turquoise. So it's thalo green, yellow shade and thalo blue mixed together. It's Daniel Smith's version. What other color should I mix guys? I have three more boxes here. What colors do you want to see mixed with purple right? <laughs> Otto, I'm sorry. I, I swear, I don't think this color is on their dot chart, which is why I didn't know about it for the longest time. And it wasn't until someone sent it to me that I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a color. How did I not know this is a color that they have? Debbie asks if I have a recommendation for a lamp. Um, if you don't have natural lighting, anything with a daylight bulb. So you can buy a regular standard desk lamp. And if you go ahead and put a daylight bulb in it, you're going to have much better results. I also spent, um, this is probably bigger than most people want, but um, I also spent a fair amount, uh, sorry, not very much money. Uh, it's a, like a $46 studio light. If you do YouTube channels or just want better lighting for your studio, it's a $46 light. I couldn't believe it was so affordable. Um, it's available if you click in the description of the video and follow me over to my Amazon store. It's in my Amazon shop and it's a big light. It requires a tripod, but it comes with it. And I am so grateful that I have this now because I don't think I could paint without it. Even when I'm not filming, I use it because the colors are so much more accurate. Um, but any, any, any desktop lamp with a daylight bulb is what I would use. Yes, I also have LED lights that have different settings on it. So the secondary light that's over here is just an LED light that has like one for reading and one for studying and one for relaxing and I use the most daylight version. Let's see, I make some, I missed some questions. Sorry, I can't talk very well today, guys. I, um, I was not feeling well yesterday, so I'm a little bit slow right now. Barb Hayes asks if I can mix the maroon with the purple right. So we have a question about mixing green. This is perylene green. So this is a dark, dark color. Um, I think I can mix the maroon with it. Let's see here. It doesn't have a lot of tinting strength. So you do have to use a fair amount of the purple right before you can get the color to lean that direction. And the perylene maroon has such a strong tinting strength. Uh, how to avoid brush lines. Use more water. If you're seeing your brush strokes, just use more water. Thanks for all the tips and chat about lamps. Lillian's asking if I can make a blackish color with this color. I don't know that I can unless I mix it with neutral tint, which I can try. Bye, Jacqueline. Thanks for stopping in. Otto says so she likes my nail color. Thank you. I um, I have exactly two bottles of nail polish, the one that you've seen in most of my videos for the last four or five months <laughs> and then I bought a new one which is this one that's very similar to that other color um 
that was like, I don't know, a fourth of the price and it chips a lot easier, but it's easy to put on and it was cheap. So I got it. <laughs> All right, Eve, have a good dinner. Thanks for stopping in. Good luck on the rest of your AAC piece and we will see everyone's AAC pieces on Thursday. This is the purple right mixed with neutral tint. I don't think this has a complement that is going to mix a black because of the fact that its opposite is yellow and it's just they're too both too light of colors to mix a black. So the only way you're going to get a black is if you mix it with a darker color. All right. Well, we didn't get to any earth tones with that. I apologize. <laughs> um, let's see. We can do a couple little swatches on here just to show you guys the range. Let's try burnt umber. You get like a dusky brown with burnt umber. And then the last one I'll try is Permanent Brown, which is PBR 25. Oh, this is pretty. So really, this is actually kind of like Perlene Maroon, like straight out of the tube. All right, Otto, have a good rest. I hope, I hope you feel better. Oh, Joe is here. Hi, Joe. I'm sorry if I missed you. Come in. Catching up on chat. Ooh, we've been live for 30 minutes already. I am one slow reader slash swatcher. Hey, Jennifer. How are you doing? I had a request to mix it with PB55. I think they'd be too similar. They're really similar in color. It would just take out some of the granulation. <laughs> uh, Lillian asks, am I typically busiest editing, actually painting, or setting up in my job? I would say editing takes longer than anything else. I can be editing a video for eight hours sometimes, depending on the length of the video. I actually don't have much opera pink. I'm sorry. I honestly don't know. I guess my Da Vinci palette would have some, maybe. It just has Opus, which is kind of like that, but it's more of the PR-122. I know, Jennifer. Chat is always so hard to catch up with streaming. All right. What's the next color we're working on? You guys can tell me in the chat while I clean off my palette. Ooh, are you finished, Jennifer? I think you have a lot more work to do, right? Like, you're doing an amazing, amazing giant piece for this, so... I'm excited to see your in-progress picture in our little solo group. Jennifer's another AAC member. She's the other one who found it, founded it with me, for those of you who are asking about the AAC earlier, if you are new to the channel and don't know what it is. Thanks, Grace. I'm glad that the videos are relaxing. We've got one for Thalo, uh, two for Thalo Green, one for Paraline Maroon. Oh, wow, Jennifer, it looks so much bigger in your pieces. I'm glad the 6x9 is going to be more manageable for you, though. Yeah, it's a really, really detailed piece. I'm so excited to see it. The uh, Animal Artist Collective, we have two videos out already, and they're every other month from here on out. So Thursday will be our next video, and then two months from then we'll have the next one. All right, Thalo Green it is. Those of you who want Paraline Maroon will have to shout it out next time. I know there's some of you there, but Paraline, or Thalo Green went out this time. All right, so those of you guys who've been around my channel for a while know I use Thalo Green Blue Shade all the time, but... 
Um, I have not used this color much at all, so I'm really excited to try it out. I know it makes some really beautiful greens, like convenience greens, and it's used in a lot of those mixtures. So let me just put out some dots of these paint. Maybe that'll help me polish chat easier. If I don't have to go back for the green every time. <laughs> Yeah, Grace, we, I mean, I would personally would love to do videos all the time, but they take so much energy to coordinate between all the artists and to research them. And sometimes they can be a little bit emotional in terms of the material that we find when we're researching. So they're pretty mentally exhaustive videos. And um, it's definitely something that something that needed to be spaced out more than once a month, even though we would like to put videos out more often. You know, before I do this, I'm sorry. I know I'm all over the place today. We need to write down what colors we mix these with because I will forget. So we had titanium, gold, ochre, Tonza, yellow deep. You guys gonna help me remember these? <laughs> Carmine. This was anthraquinone blue. Hey Zane, good to see you. Via Vaughn asked what the Animal Arts Collective is. I've mentioned it a couple times in the video if you want to watch the playback, or maybe Jennifer can give you a little line about what it is. Um, but if you look on my page, there is a playlist for the Animal Arts Collective, not just my videos, but all of the artists. So you can go ahead and check that out, and I'll tell you more about it. In my first video about the Jaguar, I explain all about how it got set up and why we're doing it. And Thursday's video will explain it once again. Yeah, I agree with Jennifer. Um, it feels right to do them every other month in terms of a workload, but it is hard not to want to do them all the time because they're so much fun. Hi, May. All right, somehow I remembered Let's go ahead and try the other way around here. Tell me what you guys want me to mix with this color and I'll put them on here. I'm gonna start with lemon yellow. We should get a, how about a nickel azo? Do a Hansa yellow deep. I didn't have room for deep. <laughs> Um, all right. Bye, Jennifer. Thanks for stopping in. Thank you, Ian, for linking our Facebook page to the Animal Artist Collective. You guys help me out. What is this color good with mixing? Because I'm not as familiar with it. I agree, Megan. I love mixing greens with reds. What do we think will be the best red complement here? We should try two, maybe. We can do, um, a pyrrole. And a carmine, we'll do both of those. If you don't have carmine, you can just use a PB-19. I don't have any Quinn Violet on my main palette. I have Dioxazine Violet. I just don't have enough room for everything. Do Quinn Gold. Everyone's favorite. I don't have any Opera Rose on my palette. I'm sorry. I have, um, I just have like the more middle, middle reds. Um, I can do an Anthraquinone Blue again. That's similar to Indigo. Someone was asking for that. Um, so the Carmine is going to be your Quinn Rose. This is very similar to Quinn Rose. I just prefer the carmine because it's deeper in color and a little richer. And what's our last one? We only have room for one more. Do a cobalt teal or 
Perylene Violet, Transparent Red Iron Oxide. Yeah, let's do an earth tone. Um, I don't have the red iron oxide on my makeup palette. I have a Quinburn orange or a burnt sienna or a permanent brown. Which one do you like, Catherine? Hi, Tiffany. <laughs> All right, Quinburn orange. Perfect. All right. So for those of you who are just joining us, thank you guys for coming on in. Uh, we're just doing some laid back color mixing today, just having some fun. We're not gonna get to all the colors that I, I have out here, but I'm gonna try and stay on for at least another uh, half hour, 45 minutes or so chatting. All right, we've got lemon yellow here to start things off and I've already painted my table. Seems right. <laughs> so my lemon yellow is from Daniel Smith. It is PY175 instead of PY3. I like it. It's a little bit more transparent and more light fast. Hi, Al. <laughs> I tried to pick a different time this time just to get some different people in the chat room. Thank you all for for coming out. I just wanted to thank you guys for 20,000 subscribers. Ooh, I like your idea, Ian, of the Venetian red. I have a Terra Rosa. Um, since I don't have room for here, I will put it on another swatch card because I think you're on to something there. I think that'd be really nice. Grace asks, did you really paint if you didn't make a mess? Oh, interesting. This nickel as a yellow is actually pretty similar to the lemon yellow in this particular mixture. I did not expect that. I think we'll get a little bit more richness out of the darker tones. I'm trying to show you a variety in each of these swatches from different um, combinations of the pigments. I have this nickel azo is from Core. I have a little bit on the side of my palette. <laughs> Me, myself, and I asked, how did I pick the name in liquid color? Actually, one of my friends helped me pick it when I was thinking about the idea of picking out a, or starting a YouTube channel. I was like, hmm, what am I gonna call it? Is it just gonna be like Denise Soden Art or Denise Soden Watercolors? And I wanted kind of the flexibility at the time because I didn't know how much I was, I didn't know how into watercolors I was going to get or stay into, which turned out to be quite a lot. <laughs> um, but I, I was like, well, I want the flexibility that if I change mediums, the channel title is still relevant and I want it set to play off of watercolors a little bit. And um, a friend of mine suggested, well, why don't you try in liquid color? like watercolors. So I can't actually take credit. My friend helped out with that one. I think you're the first person who's asked about that. <laughs> so there are some different greens that we have so far. And we're gonna do a Quinn Gold one as well. Grace says that she loves how powerful the phthalo green is. Yes, phthalo green is super powerful both the blue shades and the green shades. Oh, thank you so much, Simon. Simon says he thinks that everyone who does watercolor should subscribe, that he's learned everything he knows about pigments from me. Thank you, that's very kind of you to say. A really pretty olive green in here. I do not have enough water on this swatch card.
Tiffany says that I have more subscribers than South Pacific Island. <laughs> wow. She's looking at population of in the Cook Islands and that I have more subscribers than the population of that island. That's pretty cool. I think the the moment that I kind of had like the aha realization that my channel had really taken off is actually a really funny story. So some of you guys might or might not know that I play a game called Heroes of the Storm when I am not uh, making watercolors or content for the channel here. Uh, this is Pyro Red, by the way, and it's made like a really pretty paraline green. So that's pretty cool. Um, I play a game called Heroes of the Storm. It's a Blizzard game, and I really enjoy it in my spare time and it's super fun and I listen to a lot of content creators for that game and I listen to podcasters who talk about that game and I've gone to BlizzCon twice, uh, three times, but twice meeting these people and I completely geeked out and I was like, oh my gosh, these people are so cool. I can't believe I got to meet them. And then I realized um, like last year, I guess, that I had like completely surpassed the subscriptions that they have on their channel and granted they're podcasters so they have more listeners that aren't on their youtube channel but that was when i kind of had this moment where i was like oh my gosh like i can't believe that the people that i look up to about this other game have less subscribers than my channel does so that was kind of my aha moment about how big the channel was growing and everything and i'm just so 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 appreciative for all your guys' support it's so sweet of you guys Simon says that green is his favorite, so these swatches are making him happy. I'm glad. Thank you, Ian, again for dropping some links in there. <laughs> Zane says that here's the storm makes him laugh, uh, that they're a lull person. Uh, that's League of Legends for those of you who don't play. League of Legends is like the game in that category, but I like heroes. It's prettier and I like pretty things. <laughs> Alabaster Gypsy asks if I could only buy one green, what would it be? It would be Phthalo Green Blue Shade. I think it's the most versatile. Aw, oh, Grace, thank you. Alright, so here at the Pyro Red, we actually got like a, it's a little bit duller than the Paraline Green is on its own, but it's very similar. So if you don't have Paraline Green, but you have these other colors. <laughs> Thanks, Tiffany. Let, let Don know I'm always rooting for them. Next up is Carmine, or for you guys who like Quinacridone Rose, I know a lot of people you were asking for Quinacridone Rose. This is very similar. And this is where we're going to get our black. This is our neutral. <laughs> I feel like phthalo green is, it's very unnatural on its own, but you can mix it with so many other colors that it just makes these beautiful mixes and they're super, super vibrant and beautiful and you can tone them down, you can tone them up and other greens you can mix pretty easily from blues and yellows, but you're never going to be able to mix a phthalo green. So that's why I like it. Yes, PR-122 would work here in this slot as well. Any of those cool deep reds. You kind of a purpley color if you add in more of the red. This was a much better idea, deciding on the colors before starting swatching. <laughs> it makes it easier to follow chat. This is gorgeous. Holy camoly. I know you can't go back in the video. I'm sorry with the live streams like that, but you'll be able to watch the replay. The replay will be on the channel. Oof. Beautiful. <laughs> Joe says that this is an undersea wonderland color. I agree. So pretty. So I'm going to show you this too, guys. Um, let me pull out another scrap, 
scrap piece of paper. So most thalo turquoises, if they're not the single pigment, they're made from um, thalo green blue shade and thalo blue green shade. So PB15 colon 3 and PG7, but Daniel Smith uses the PG36 in theirs. So that's the tube color from Daniel Smith. And let's see if we can kind of recreate this. in a mixture. You actually need a lot more of the Thalo Blue than I thought. So it's this beautiful, deep, rich color. So if you don't have Thalo Turquoise, you can mix it using either Thalo Green and Thalo Blue. Sorry, I wasn't looking at chat for a while while I was doing that. <laughs> Let's see. Yes, it's very similar to Mission's Peacock Blue. I believe that's the same color mixture, the Thalo Blue and the Thalo Green. And we have a question asking, what do people mean if a color is muddy? Muddy is kind of when it turns kind of murky grayish brown and isn't very really vibrant. Um, sometimes that can be a good thing and sometimes that can be detrimental to your mixes. Hey Steve! Glad we could catch you after supper. We're just doing some some paint mixing today. Some new colors for me. I know PG36 is common for most people but I don't have it on my main palette. <laughs> I have the other version, PG7. So we're just trying out some new color mixes. So this last one on this sheet is the um, Quinacridone Burnt Orange and holy camoly guys, you were right. This is beautiful. Super rich, dark, sappy olive green. Hey Steven. You and Steve are in the same boat. You guys both joining us after dinner. I'm glad you guys could make it. see. <laughs> Zane, yep, you knew it would be a good idea. I agree. It's a beautiful sap green. Joe asks, in my experience from today, does this mix differently enough from PG7 to warrant owning its own space? That is a great question and one that I was asking myself kind of in the back of my mind um, that I think these are similar enough to PG7 and PG7 will mix my beloved sap green with quinacridone gold. So even though this is close right here um, and definitely a close second if you don't have quinacridone gold, I would probably personally still just say PG7 is fine. I don't think the rest of these mixtures are deep enough, big enough of a change to warrant their own. If you want a more, uh, Gosh, my words today. <laughs> um, if you want a wider variety of light bright greens, then this color would be more beneficial because you can definitely get more of these bright greens, but I don't paint with those very often. So for me, I'm gonna stay with PG7. <laughs> Traveling Chin Chin says, I heard a rumor somewhere that Chinese company was going to bring back PO49. I have not heard that rumor. I would be curious in hearing more. All right. Let's do one more and then I'm going to call it a night. Go get some dinner for myself because over here on the West Coast, it's, it's nearing dinner time, but not quite there yet. So these are the remaining colors I have for your 
options of what I'm going to mix today. We've got the Kaput Mortem Violent Mummy Bauxite Paraline Maroon and Burgundy Red Ochre. Kelly still wants to see Paraline Maroon. Grace has minstroni cooking. What's on my menu tonight? I haven't decided yet. I think I've been painting all day. I'm pretty tired, so I don't know if I want to cook or not. I have a couple of frozen meals, but if I can muster up cooking, I have some spaghetti sauce that wants to be made <laughs> in my fridge. All right, apparently Maroon wins. Could put more in Violet was a close second, but we'll do the apparently Maroon. <laughs> Yep, someone mentioned at PO49 that there's a rumor, just a rumor, that it might be coming back from a Chinese company, but I have not heard any such things, so we'll, we'll have to see. All right. Oop, there's a splotch on this one. What colors are we mixing with Paraline Maroon? You guys tell me. I know you guys are more familiar with this color than I am. Oh, crock pots are great, Grace. I have one and I rarely use it. I don't know why I don't use it more often. Actually, I probably do. It's really huge. I act, I ordered one online and it was way bigger than I thought it would be. So it's just a pain in the butt to take down <laughs> uh, from my fridge. So I don't use it very often, but I should, I should use it more. Oh no, Joe, I told you I was going to mix um, phthalo green with the... Um, with the, the Venetian red or I have Terra Rosa. So you guys keep telling me what you want to see of Paraly Maroon, but I'm going to mix this for Joe. The Terra Rosa from M. Graham, which is like Venetian red and the Thalo green. Ooh, that's pretty. It's like a deep forest green. So really beautiful. All right. We've got lots of answers here. We have yellow ochre. We've got cobalt teal. Thalo green blue shade. Uh, Thalo turquoise single pigment. All right, so let's start with yellow ochre. I try and do these kind of like in spectral order. Um, so yellow ochre. Do we want a yellow in here at all or no? I think Quinn Gold might look pretty with it. We do a Quinn Gold. Then I think I saw, do we want to do a purple? Which purple? I'll leave this spot open for purple. You guys tell me which purple. Um, then we're going to do ultramarine, someone said. Um, then we have cobalt teal. Phthalo green. PV14. Interesting, Steve. Um, do I have that anywhere nearby? It's definitely not on my main palette. I have some in a palette, but it's under a pile of stuff, and I feel like if I take it out, it's just going to be catastrophic. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if there's anywhere else I have that color, but I don't think there is. Yeah, I have Cobalt Violet in my M. Graham palette, and it's sitting under a pile of stuff. Hold on. For Steve, I'll do it. 
I'll move the pile of stuff and try not to make a huge racket so I don't break all your ears. Now I have to remember which one's Cobalt Violet. <laughs> I'm working on an M. Graham swatch with me video and I keep adding more colors so I have a very um, haphazard list of colors here that I have to check every time I open this up to make sure that I'm reaching for the right color. Cobalt Violet PV14 is the fifth color in my second row. It's that one. <laughs> so when we get there, I will use that. All right. Cobalt Violet it is. That one better be good, Steve. <laughs> I'm sure it will be. <laughs> All right. Grace asked, did I organize my palettes yet? Are they still in hampers? They're in hampers. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tiffany Grace says, transparent pyro orange could be great or could be awful. I think they'd actually be really similar in color. I think they'd make like a really vibrant red. Um, have I ever tried Sakura Koi? I have. I've tried them, not extensively. They're okay. Christine asks, how long have I been? How long have I been on? About an hour. <laughs> PG8 from White Knights. All right. So it's just called Green from White Knights. Makes it kind of confusing because you don't really know what you're talking about. Um, and the last one, let's see. Do you want to do brown? Try not to take too long deciding here. Oh, I know. Oh, I dropped my pen cap on the floor. I was going to say um, Paraline Green, but that's kind of similar to the PG-8. <laughs> Chat is talking about the, the uh, value of good paper. Absolutely. We talked about that a little bit earlier in the stream. We have Ultramarine. Do we want to do a cooler blue? We have Cobalt Teal, Thalo Green, Regular Green. That's a lot of greens. Let's do the anthraquinone blue just because I love that color. I'm going to be boring and mix that with everything that we do today because it truly is just amazing. All right. Well, if there's other colors that you absolutely have to see with it before I go, let me know and I'll try, try and do my best. We're going to start off with yellow ochre. Oh, we're saying Tana Thorne says side by side comparison of the two is mind blowing. I think you're talking about on the different colors, exact different papers on the exact same color. And absolutely. Um, we were talking about swatches and papers earlier in the stream, and I have a video for making my swatch cards, and I show you the difference between student grade paper and a cotton paper in that video. And I just would recommend whatever you're painting on, do your swatches on that because they are they're so different and if you do all your swatches on student grade paper and you usually use cotton paper the colors aren't going to be the same and you're not going to know what to expect hey ellen it's good to see you we're working on our last combo for today but the replay will be available so you'll be able to watch it on replay Probably have at least another 20 minutes though because I'm slow when I'm reading chat. <laughs> uh, thanks Tiffany. You should like this video if you like color mixing. Please do, it helps the channel out a lot. <laughs> PR 179 is the color of blood. I mean it's very close. This is pretty.
I'm gonna add some more yellow ochre, see what lighter tones we can get. Ooh, this is like a really pretty, I think someone mentioned it earlier that you get like a red ochre out of it. I think you're spot on there. It's slightly opaque because of the yellow ochre. This is Quinn Gold. And this actually reminds me a lot of Alizarin Gold from Da Vinci, so much so that I want to check the pigment numbers on that. I think it's nickel as a yellow in one of the deep reds, and it's very similar if you like this color. Um, where would I have that to? Oh, look at that. Something was actually easy to find. So Da Vinci's um, Alizarin Gold is PR177 with, oh, it's PY42. It's a yellow ochre, but it looks very similar in color, a little bit deeper red than this. Um, but it's a really unique one. Pretty cool. Hey, Mark. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, my goodness. What is the chat talking about? It's moving so fast. I think more paper, right? You're just talking about paper. <laughs> Always welcome, Mark. We're just doing some color mixing. All right, Steve, moment of truth. Here's your cobalt violet. Do the extra reach for this one sitting all the way in the back. Well, I can tell you right now, the Perylene Violet, or Perylene Maroon, wants to overtake that Violet, so we're going to have to build up some more pigment on that brush. Ooh, that is pretty. So interesting. This kind of looks like perylene violet down in this area when it dries. That uh, perylene violet when it dries, not this, because that obviously hasn't dried yet. Yeah, that is. I really like that. Thank you, Steve. Great recommendation. And one I wouldn't have thought of, so I'm glad you could be here to let us know about it. Next, we have ultramarine classic ultramarine and this is super super deep desaturated violet it's actually deeper than I expected it to be <laughs> doing a good thing mark charity logos no worries though I hope it goes well Mini Seastar says there's a nice shop in Santa Cruz called Lens Art. I didn't know that. I will go ahead and see if I can make a trip down there sometime. Santa Cruz is about 50 minutes away. It's not terrible, but it's not like somewhere I'm just going to go for the fun of it. You have to go over a very windy mountain road to get there, so... I will see if I can make it over there sometime and check that out. Thanks for letting me know. All right, Tiffany, I hope that your little bun bun is okay. What happened to my chat? There it is. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad you could stop in. Richie asked, how long have I been painting with watercolors? About three years. Before that, I used acrylic and did polymer clay stuff and painted the polymer clay with acrylic. Oh, cool. Thank you, guys. Yeah, Jenny, let me know if there's other ones that I need to stop by at. They just closed my local one, so I no longer have an art store here. The closest one is about 40 minutes away up in Redwood City. Again, not a terrible drive, but not something I just do for the fun of it. Awesome, thank you.
Yeah, I definitely, after supporting University Art before they went out of sale, or out of business, I bought a whole lot of stuff there. <laughs> so I am not going to be shopping anytime soon for art supplies. I picked up way more than I needed, but uh, the next time I need some art supplies, I'll see if I can check out some more local businesses. All right, bye Zane, thanks for coming in. Oh, wow, Lillian. I had no idea they were discounting the tubes that were banged up like that. That's amazing. Lillian got um, a color from the store that was closing for $1.35 because the tube was damaged. Black Cat Bean asks if I have any recommendations for student grade watercolor paint. I would recommend... Um, if you can, white nights are not student quality, they're artist quality, but they're the same price range as student quality paint. Those are the ones I would recommend. If you truly want a student grade paint, I like Van Gogh. Mark, I have not tried Imgram's gouaches, but I would love to. Um, I have a couple other brands and I'm having a lot of fun with it. So um, I would like to try out theirs since I think it would be nice and juicy. I did pick up some tubes, a lot of those ones I was talking to you guys about, um, like the Burgundy Red Ochre and the Paraline Maroon and the Caput Mortem Violet. These were all on sale, but they weren't on that kind of sale. <laughs> uh, I still paid probably about $10 a tube for them, but a lot of them would have been like, this one probably would have been like $16 or $18 without it. Um, so, I mean, I got a good deal on it, but not $1.35. That's excellent. And yeah, I agree. A lot of the brushes were already, already done. They were gone. <laughs> they had some acrylic and oil ones yet, but uh, left, but no watercolor ones that were very good. Yes, you're right, Jacqueline. Thanks for coming back in and letting us know. Um, Otto just got some of the Imgram gouaches from Sade, from Sadie Saves the Day. They did a swap, and she swatched out some of those gouache gouaches on her collaboration video. I went to University Art three times in their two-week closing sale. <laughs> I went once when they were at 30% off, once when they were at 40% off, and once this past weekend um, on Saturday when they were 50% off. This is Thela Green Blue Shade, and I love this green. The deep forest green. Again, very similar to the Paraline green. If I can get a little bit richer mix. Almost black. It was so sad seeing the store on Saturday. I can't even imagine what Sunday looked like. It was so sad to see the store like completely disheveled and all their watercolor paper was gone in like the first two days of the sale, like two weeks ago. It was the first thing that went. <laughs> I like that mixture a lot. That one's really pretty. Mind of Watercolor says the Holbein gouache has a good rep. I have some, but yet to try it. I have tried the Holbeins. They're fine. I mean, I don't have a whole lot to compare them to again, since I haven't tried a whole lot of gouache, but they do dry up pretty, um, pretty fall apart <laughs> It's not really a technical term. I can show you my Holbein palette. You're supposed to work from gouache fresh. You can reactivate it, but it's harder. And this is what my gouache palette looks like. So the black completely cracks apart. These other colors have some honey or glycerin mixed into them. Um, but I'll still open this up and have chips of them falling off places. 
if that's helpful. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. I'm so sorry to hear that Minnie C. Star. She has good memories of university art. University art is probably what I owe to starting off my watercolor adventure, honestly. Um, I researched colors for probably a month before I was ready to buy them, but I went into our local art store here and spent probably two hours looking at their Daniel Smith swatch card. They had one of the full swatch cards swatched out and I just sat there like on the floor looking at all these colors and like trying to decide which ones uh, I wanted to add to my main palette and that's where I bought all the colors for my very first watercolor palette uh, of Daniel Smith paints. <laughs> so Mark, for me, he's saying that putting gouache in pans is a big no-no. Um, it's a big no-no, and I you should work from fresh gouache if you can. I just hate working with tube paint. I don't know what it is. I don't like the setup about it. So if I'm going to be working on a bigger piece, I'll probably like go out and make the extra effort to to get the, the wet gouache that I know would be more helpful um, for the paintings, but... I just don't like working in that format. I'd rather just work with watercolors or opaque watercolors and get some opaque colors and get some white and <laughs> mix them together. <laughs> I um, I do have the Winsor Newton white gouache and that one flakes less, I think, than the Holbein. If that's helpful information. But I really like those Mission White class that I got more recently that are the hybrid paints that absolutely can stay in a palette because of the way that I specifically like to work. So maybe gouache just isn't for me if I don't want to work from tubes, and that's fine. That's why I don't work from acrylic. <laughs> I would recommend if you're going to go ahead and use the gouache from pan, just put a couple drops of water on it and let it sit for a while so it can reactivate. It's the same binder as watercolor, so it shouldn't be that drastic of a difference if you let it sit with water on it for a few minutes first. <laughs> yeah, Joni, I have a video on those and then links on where to find them if you want to check out the Mission White class. Hey, Barbara. Yeah, I agree, Steve. I try and work from fresh white if I can. I keep a little dollop of white on some of my watercolor palettes in case I need them for highlights. But working fresh white is definitely the best. This is my new favorite. I use this almost exclusively for my white details now. I say almost exclusively. I have how many supplies I've reviewed here on the channel. <laughs> I'm sure I have plenty of other things that I use as well, but I use this over white gouache now. Um, I really like the Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White, and it doesn't pick up the layers underneath it. It is water mixable, like while it's wet, but it won't reactivate too much when it's uh, after it's dried, so I really like that one. Christina uses that, Lillian uses that. Oh, Lillian says Lindsay uses that a lot. Interesting. I don't know if I've seen her use it very often. Grace says she loves how moody the mixtures are. Yeah, this um, the PGH from White Knights is really cool. The Cobalt Teal has insane granulation going on. I haven't tried mixing the Bleed Proof White too much with the color, Steve. Glad to know that it's a little bit troublesome for you, um, so I don't get too frustrated with that. I have added some color to tint it, and that hasn't been problematic, but I haven't used it in large areas. It's always just for, like, highlights. Barbara, I agree. I added a little bit of glycerin to my Holbein's and they still crack too. All right, last color here. I think I ran out of little dots of my Pearly Maroon, so get a new pile out going. This is probably going to be the closest to purple. It's kind of like a perylene violet. This is the Anthraquinone Blue PB60 from M. Graham. Oh, 
the purples that I have here so far are just very deep moody purples. The blues over here. Joni asks, how do I store all of my tubes of paint? I have, I don't know what it's called. It's like a little organizer. Um, this is what a drawer looks like. There's four of these uh, for these larger ones. And then there's eight smaller compartments that are half this size. And I keep all the tubes in here. And I organize them by brand so I can find them when I need them. I am going to try and do a studio tour soon if you guys are interested in seeing that. I know there's been some requests lately. Bye, Mark. See you later. We're wrapping up here soon. <laughs> um, I know some people have been asking about studio tours, so if you're interested in seeing that, I'm going to try and do so in a little bit, and then I can show you kind of more of the storage situation set up that aren't directly over my desk. <laughs> Lillian says she's interested in seeing that. Um, we have a question about asking if PD27 and PD60 are similar. For me, and I'm putting like a big asterisk on here, uh, for me, they're similar because I don't use them as necessarily a warm or cool blue. I use them as a dark blue and like that's what I'm using it for. So I can show you, I have some in my travel palette here. Hold on one sec. Here is the Imgram Prussian Blue before it fades anyway. <laughs> and then the Anthrocrinone Blue is a lot warmer. It's not as cool as the Prussian Blue is, but to me, I use them as a dark blue. So for me, I swapped out my Prussian Blue for Anthrocrinone Blue, and that's the change I made. So a lot of people will say that phthalo blue is closer to Prussian blue because it is um, less warm. I lost my words there for a second. <laughs> uh, but I personally just feel like the anthrocrinone blue is closer. Now, PB60 is not going to be closer if you're using Daniel Smith's version because Daniel Smith's version is very gray. Um, but I think if you're using Imgram's version, that it's, it's pretty close. Um, are these professional paints or more normal paints? Um, I'm not sure what the question means, but these are all professional grade paints that we've shown in the video today. Kelly, I will go ahead and put, um, she's asking if I can put these on Instagram. I think I can fit them in a shot on Instagram. I can certainly put them in my stories, um, but those are only there for 24 hours. So I'll definitely put them there. I'll see if I can put them on the main feed. And otherwise, um, ping me, remind me through Instagram, and I'll try and get them up there. So I'm gonna try and peel the tape off of one of these on camera at least. Um, and then we're gonna wrap up for the evening. Well, for me, it's evening. For you guys, who knows? All around the world, different times. <laughs> it's the Purperite Genuine. <laughs> oh, yeah, Ellen. So we did this earlier in the stream. You can go ahead and uh, watch the replay to see it. I was trying to figure out, because it's a new color for me, too. I wanted to know what it mixed well with. Jordan asks why I stopped working as a zoo educator. Um, it was because of my health. Uh, I have a chronic fatigue and pain disorder, so I cannot work a nine to five job and I certainly can't work holding live animals in front of large assemblies. So I was not able to stay there, unfortunately. But now I'm still trying to share my animal love with all of you guys through the AAC videos, which we will have on Thursday. Once again, if you weren't here earlier in chat, on Thursday we will have an AAC video and we'll tell you all about our animals that come from wetlands. <laughs> Thanks, Grace. I'm glad that you guys are still learning lots through, through the channel and everything. 
a question asking if I have any tips for painting animals. I have lots of tips. <laughs> I have some videos here on the channel that have some uh, shortened tutorials and then over on my Patreon I have real time tutorials where we paint animals twice a month. Now three times a month actually. We've reached our stretch goal so all patrons now will get three tutorials a month. Two at the $5 tier, one at the $10 tier. And um, those I go through real time painting mostly animals. I won't say every single one is an animal but most of them are animals. And um, there are over, there's 30 of them now, I think. I do two a month and I started back last February. So there's over, over 30. So if you guys are interested in that, I have those real-time videos. I have shortened videos here on the channel. And again, the AAC videos, I have some information where we're talking about the animals and then also some tips for painting them as well. So thank you guys so much for coming today. Um, we are done with oh sorry once again super loud my apologies we were checking out uh phthalo green yellow shade perylene maroon and purpurite genuine which was kind of a nice range of different colors here so yeah i hope you guys had fun today um i'll stick around and chat for a couple more moments to answer any last minute questions but i'm going to go ahead and turn off this stream so thank you guys i'll see you thursday and i hope you all have a wonderful time painting